Hi, this is Jan from New York City, and my channel name is Jan from New York City Saves Money. Welcome to my first pre-record on StreamYard. I've upgraded my service on this wonderful service. I went from the free uh, option to the next level option because this gives me more flexibility to record more videos instead of just only the shorter audios during the week. So I decided I want to go a different route. Notice you don't see that little duck. You don't see that little duck in the corner. That's because I just, this is not my brand logo or anything, but just as an experiment, put the carousel up there for today because I love carousels. I think, I think carousels are beautiful and amazing. I really, really do. So I thought I'd get this started by doing something new and different. Once a week, I'd like to take some readings from this amazing book. And I did do this once before on a live show. Second Helping of Chicken Soup for the Soul. This kind of a book, which was published many, many years ago, this belonged to my mom. And one day when I was cleaning out her bookcase, I came across it. I said, wouldn't it be like a really nice gesture to take a couple of these stories every once in a while and read them? So I have the opportunity to read a couple of these little short stories and poem, and I'm going to uh, poems because it's more than one. I'm going to uh, do that today, tonight. So whenever you get to see this, I seriously hope that you uh, sit back and just give a listen and uh, it'll probably take about 30 minutes. I, I'm just guessing or less 30 minutes or less and just kick back and Let's hear some really nice stories. I research, they're all good stories, but I research a couple of stories that just seem to touch my heart. I might have read this on the live show, but this little story bears worth repeating. And naturally, I must get my what? Trusty glasses. Okay. And as usual, I hope everyone is doing well whenever you get to see this. I'm so excited to do it this way. Yes, yes, yes. To do a pre-record and have some stories for you with meaning. Okay. I guess the teacher in me has not quite left, right? Okay. The name of the story is the $2 bill. Okay. The $2 bill. And the writer of this uh, story is Floyd L. Shalonsky. Floyd L. Shalonsky. And did I mention the author of the uh, chicken, second helping of chicken soup for the soul? Uh, with outstanding stories by Ann Landers, Ken Blanchard, Art Linkletter, Harold Bloomfield, Betty Youngs, M. Scott Peck, and many, many more. And uh, Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen uh, put this together. And this used to be, well, I guess it was at one time, Number one, New York Times bestselling authors, Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen. There you go. Okay. Kick back, get your tea, or just close your eyes and listen to a couple of feel nice stories. There you go. So this is called The $2 Bill. Returning from a trip to Washington, D.C., I arrived in Anchorage at about 2 a.m. on a Monday morning in the middle of May. At 9 a.m., I was scheduled to talk at a local high school to students in a program designed to keep pregnant teens and troubled kids in school. The school is highly secured because most of the kids are troublemakers who became involved with the law. I found it very difficult to address this multicultural group and talk about things that could motivate them for the future. I wasn't making any headway until I started talking about what I do so well, helping people with money. I took out a stack of $2 bills and I started giving them out. People started coming up and taking them. Wouldn't you? I know I would. The kids started to wake up because it was free money. The only thing I asked them after they took the money was not to spend it on themselves. I told them that they each had children that are unborn 
and maybe if there is anything in this world that could help move them forward, it is the fact that someone cares enough to do this. Some of the kids asked for my autograph. Some did not. I think I honestly touched some of them. I started exchanging the dollar bills for a copy of the book I had written. This went on for five or six minutes, and I finally closed with telling them about my grandfather, who had motivated me to go forward. I told them that no matter what happens, to remember that whether it is a teacher or themselves, someone out there really cares about them and is pulling for their success. This is not the end of the story. When I left the classroom, I told them to call me if they ever had problems or if they were ever in trouble. I couldn't promise that I could help, but I was willing to listen and willing to try to do anything in the world. I also told them if they wanted a copy of my book to call my office, I would be happy to send one to them. Three days later, I received a crumpled piece of paper in the mail. It was from a girl who heard my talk. It read, Dear Floyd, thank you very much for taking time to come and talk to my class. Thank you for giving me the crisp new $2 bill. I will cherish this forever. And I have written my child's name on it. And it will never be used for anything else. But something that she wants or she needs. The reason I am writing you is because the day that you talked to our class, I had made a decision that morning. I had cleaned out my desk paid whatever bills I owed the school, and I was going to take mine and my unborn child's life because I really didn't think anyone cared. When you told the story, it brought tears to my eyes about someone pulling for you, that life was not ready to be terminated. The fact is, I will probably stick around a while because there are people like you that care about people like me that don't even know me. Thanks for caring. Is that memorable or is that memorable? I would say that is memorable. Next goes... I would, I would consider this a poem, and the name of it is called He's Just a Little Boy, and written by Chaplain Bob Fox. He stands at the plate with his heart pounding fast. The bases are loaded. The die has been cast. Mom and Dad cannot help him. He stands all alone. A hit at the moment would send the team home. The ball meets the plate, he swings and he misses. There's a groan from the crowd with some boos and some hisses. A thoughtless voice cries, strike out the bum. Tears fill his eyes, the game's no longer fun. So open your heart and give him a break for it's moments like this, a man you can make. Please keep this in mind. When you hear someone forget, he is just a little boy and not a man yet. Very thought provoking. We do kind of like have tendencies to push the envelope and rush things, right? Okay. Another very, very sweet poem. This is called But You Didn't by Stan Gebhardt. And it's on page 94. But you didn't. I looked at you and smiled the other day. I thought you'd see me smile. But you didn't. I said, I love you. And waited for what you would say. I thought you'd hear me. But 
You didn't. I asked you to come outside and play ball with me. I thought you'd follow me, but you didn't. I drew a picture just for you to see. I thought you'd save it, but you didn't. I made a fort for us back in the woods. I thought you'd camp with me, but you didn't. I found some worms and such for fishing if we could. I thought you'd want to go, but you didn't. I needed you just to talk to, my thoughts to share. I thought you'd want to, but you didn't. I told you about the game, hoping you'd be there. I thought you'd surely come, but you didn't. I asked you to share my youth with me. I thought you'd want to, but you couldn't. My country called me to war. You asked me to come home safely, but I didn't. <laughs> That's a thinker. That's a thinker. So these stories are absolutely absolutely wonderful i'm just going through this um anyway i just thought that you know you might appreciate every once in a while little stories there's one more i'm going to read it's called rescued and it's very very short rescued a little girl whose parents had died lived with her grandmother and slept in an upstairs bedroom one night, there was a fire in the house, and the grandmother perished while trying to rescue the child. The fire spread quickly, and the first floor of the house was soon engulfed in flames. Neighbors called the fire department, then stood helplessly by, unable to enter the house because flames blocked all the entrances. The little girl appeared at an upstairs window, crying for help. Just as word spread among the crowd, that firefighters would be delayed a few minutes because they were all at another fire. Suddenly, a man appeared with a ladder, put it up against the side of the house, and disappeared inside. When he reappeared, he had the little girl in his arms. He delivered the child to the waiting arms below, then disappeared into the night. An investigation revealed that the child had no living relatives, and weeks later, a meeting was held in the town hall to determine who would take the child into their home and bring her up. A teacher said she would like to raise the child. She pointed out that she could ensure a good education. A farmer offered her an upbringing on his farm. He pointed out that living on a farm was healthy and satisfying. Others spoke giving their reasons why it was to the child's advantage to live with them. Finally, the town's richest resident arose and said, I can give this child all the advantages that you have mentioned here, plus money and everything that money can buy. Throughout all of this, the child remained silent, her eyes on the floor. Does anyone else want to speak? Asked the meeting chairman. A man came forward from the back of the hall. His gait was slow, and he seemed in pain. When he got to the front of the room, he stood directly before the little girl and held out his arms. The crowd gasped. His hand and arms were terribly scarred. The child cried out, This is the man who rescued me. With a leap, she threw her arms around the man's neck holding on for dear life. Just as she had that fateful night, she buried her face in his shoulder and sobbed for a few moments. Then she looked up and smiled at him. This meeting is adjourned, said the chairman. Very, very heartwarming story. One of many. You know what? I have a little poem. I'll read you another one, and that'll be the final one for this time. And if you're still with me, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. 
And if you enjoy me reading some stories, please give me a thumbs up and please do not hesitate to share this video with someone who may be interested in this. Thank you so much. Okay, the name of this poem is called Little Eyes Upon You. The author is unknown, but it was submitted by Ronald Dash Dalston, excuse me. Little Eyes Upon You. There are little eyes upon you and they're watching night and day. There are little ears that quickly take in every word you say. There are little hands all eager to do anything that you do. And a little boy who's dreaming of the day he'll be like you. You're the little fellow's idol. You're the wisest of the wise. In his little mind about you, no suspicions ever rise. He believes in you devoutly, holds all you say and do. He will say and do in your way when he's grown up just like you. There's a wide-eyed little fellow who believes you're always right and his eyes are always open and he watches day and night. You are setting an example every day in all you do for the little boy who's waiting to grow up to be like you. Absolutely so sweet. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to listening to the readings. I really, really do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have an amazing upcoming day. Good night.